Yo, 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 welcome back, welcome back, welcome to the channel, it is, you know who I am, you clicked on the video, okay, okay, welcome back, guys, welcome back, um, so, yes, we are here, as you can see, um, I'm a little bit clean shaven today, or cleaner than I was, um, yeah, so I've been getting a lot of stuff moved around, uh, getting a lot of things uh, kind of finalized and squared away. Uh, I still haven't quite figured out my computer setup to do reaction videos, so as soon as I do, I will get that to you guys. I'll start putting out videos. Um, if anybody knows how to work OBS and knows how to uh, get like the audio capture in there, please let me know so I can, uh, that's my last little step. I got everything else. But that's not what we're here for today. Skipping all that. While we are here today, um, it's basically a two-part video. Uh, so as you guys may know or will remember from my other videos, if not, go back and look through my page for the videos. Um, um, I was going to go to the Army, but now I have signed to go to the Marines. And this whole video is to explain why that is, why I chose to do the Marines over the Army. Um, so just to kind of, I guess, uh, break this down like a little bit, my whole initial goal at first going into the military was to try to get, um, uh, basically like build my resume in a way. And I know that sounds terrible, but it was kind of to build my resume while also getting some type of like skills and learning for the career field that I was gonna choose. And first, uh, so I went to school for uh, biology, physiology. I was doing pre-med. Um, and I graduated with my degree earlier this year. And I was going to go into the Army as an officer and try to do the medical route. Um, and I don't know even in exactly like what that would encompass. I just knew that um, I went out to the recruiter like, hey, this I want to do something in medical. Uh, as an officer, um, she was basically still trying to work out the details of what I could do. Um, and so that took a few months because I kind of, I really don't end up know, I don't really know what happened. So my, my cousin is in the military, so I reached out to him and he put me in contact with the recruiter and that recruiter uh, set me up with, with another guy, basically. He was like, hey, you know, I know someone that can really help you out. Uh, like, he has kind of connections to where I live. And so the, he, he was like, well, we can take a little bit of time because in all in this process, I started this process back in February. And they told me basically like, let's just get some information down and um, we can kind of like really go after it once you finish school, which I finished in May. And then once I got married in July. So I was like, okay, yeah, you know, no big deal. But then at, when school ends, I kind of reach out. Um, and so that guy was like, yeah, you know, we can just slow play it um, until, you know, you finish, until your wedding comes around and then you can kind of go from there. So I was like, yeah, okay, that makes perfect sense. You know, you because I'm going to have to do all this paperwork for it. Perfect sense. Well, then, I don't, we really don't know what happened. I never got any clarification. Um, I just know I reached out to the guy again, and um, I didn't hear back from him. So then I called the original guy that my cousin put me in contact with, and he said, uh, he was like, hey, um, he was like, that guy won't be helping you out anymore. Um, he was like, I'm actually going to put you in... Um, with, uh, with my wife because she's also a recruiter. So I was like, okay, yeah, cool, uh, that works. So then we got the ball rolling. Well, this is, this is more so like on me um, as to why like now I'm having to like do all this shift in just a short amount of time. So this, all this happens right after my wedding. I get married on, I got married on July 11th. So then I reach out to them a few days later, right as I'm like on my honeymoon. So then as soon as I get back from my honeymoon, um, we get like the process going, like, you know, the paperwork, the name, the blah, 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 the social security, all that type of stuff. Well, right in the middle of this, I'm like, I start talking to her and uh, she's kind of giving me like the rundown of like how it would be to uh, become an officer. Um, and nowhere in here was I hearing that I was gonna get like, um, anything that could help me like, I guess my next step. 
uh, to kind of go back a little bit, my plan was when I say a career, uh, I was using as a resume booster. So I was going to go into the reserves as an officer and I was going to try to move to uh, Philadelphia because I love the city of Philadelphia. I'm a huge Philadelphia uh, fan as far as sports. And so um, I was going to try to move there and go to school uh, to get my master's in medical science. Well, while, while doing that, I wanted to also be doing uh, reserves and doing something medical with them as well. So there was so that way it could be like some kind of overlap um, into like my life down the line. And um, I thought originally like I wanted to be uh, a surgeon. I'm pretty sure I mentioned that on here. And I thought I would want to go active duty after I got like all of my schooling because my whole initial plan was go there for my master's. Um, try to get cause, because and i said why i was trying to go um get my master's in medical science was because i knew qualification wise off of my grades from school i wasn't going to be able to get into med school for a while so i figured um well and i've also heard and been told if you remain scholarly that it helps you advance and also with the program i was trying to do um you could get uh you would get your master's uh, from the same university that had their med school and you also got uh, MCAT prep and you also got an interview with their med school. So it's kind of like a, um, it was a, a good deal if you decide to take this route. So I was like, man, you, that would be nice. And I would be like in the city that I would love, you know, like love to live in. Um, and then on top of that, I was going to try to be uh, an EMT as a job. So to kind of see how I would juggle that, I would be going to school, working as an EMT, while also showing up one, uh, one weekend a month to be in the reserves. Um, all to remain scholarly, to um, advance my career, while also giving myself the best chance to get into med school because my grades weren't um, sufficient enough on their own to just be like, here they are. So um, that's me taking you guys back a little bit to how I led to this point. So then I'm talking with her um, and then I'm just kind of like, like what I'm hearing, I'm like, ah, okay, you know, because uh, it, it's for anybody that doesn't know, which I, I've heard, but I didn't really realize until I sat down and spoke with her um, was that um, as an officer, you're kind of just like a supervisor. Like you aren't the one that's actually getting the training to do the work. So you may get some training in the work, but um, you don't get the overall. Like, um, yeah, that you don't, you don't, you don't do it. It, it. You just make sure everybody else is doing it. That's what I'm trying to say. So, uh, and I know some people may be like, well, why don't you just go active duty? Uh, with them and then come uh, and try to do something medical and I did consider that for a while um, so this this has now been going on so that was at the beginning end of July now to August and we are now at what um, August 23rd so that was something I considered um, but as I'm saying this, like I have been talking with like my friends and uh, my wife and I was like I don't know if I'm fully into healthcare like I want to be. Uh, and it looks like, you know, just, I don't know if, how successful I'm going to end up. So more so this was me having second thoughts on myself. Um, and I, and I was talking to my wife, I was like, basically, um, I could, so, well, to, to why I bring up my friends in there too. So a lot of my friends do, uh, air traffic control and, um, it's something that I was kind of interested in before, but uh, I never really knew like, how to pursue it. Like I asked them and they just knew, they were like, yeah, they went to school and then they tried to get into the academy in Oklahoma, which they did, and then they moved on from there. So um, I was like, okay, um, but this this was just like a passing thought. I was like, dang, that'd be cool to do, but I went on. Cause I was like, oh, well, I'm, I'm going into healthcare. But then uh, now that this decision, so now that I'm 28, the FAA um, does not allow you to uh, apply past, what is it? You have to be 30 or younger by the time the application comes out. And so I 
when so I had just thought about this and I asked my wife I said hey what if I actually just didn't do like uh, healthcare we just didn't move right now um, what if I went and applied for air traffic control through FAA she was like you know what I'm I mean I trust whatever decision you make um, so I was like okay so when I looked it up I was two days after when uh, the application period was open for the open bids to come in and try to be an air traffic controller. So then, but now my head is fully locked in on air traffic control. And um, and so I started talking to more people, like I'm reaching out to people, uh, I'm talking to guys that I know that do it, and they're like, man, I love it, like it's awesome, you should try it. Like if you get the opportunity, go for it. And so I'm just like looking, I'm like, man, okay. So then I was like, hey, let me see how I can turn this into um, into the army. So I asked uh, the uh, so I'm talking to people like in the army, blah blah blah, uh, and I'm doing like research, and I keep seeing like constantly people saying um, that they didn't get the certifications that they need in the army to come out to do civilian uh, air traffic control. Uh, but what I did keep seeing was that everyone kept saying, if you want to do civilian air traffic control um, and have all your qualifications out of the way, go Air Force and uh, Marines. And so, uh, and like I constantly kept seeing this, kept seeing this, like I'm calling recruiters, I'm asking my friends, like, you know, like, hey, you know, do you, do you know about, like, do you, who do you interact with? And it held true, like, from what I'm reading and understanding was Air Force and Marines. And so I was like, well, man, okay. I was like, so am I really going to do air traffic control? Um, because my time is winding down on the opportunity. So like, so then I take a couple of days, like I think it through and I was like, okay, look, um, I could try to do healthcare and uh, so I could still go into the reserves, uh, do the officer route and move away to Philadelphia, you know, and do all of that plan that I had. Um, but I said, that could be kind of me marching in place, like, you know, being very stagnant for the next four years. Um, let's say hypothetically, because the, uh, the master's program would take about two years. Um, and then I would have to, you know, then study for the MCAT, uh, wait for the results of that, and then try to get accepted into med school. Um, after I interviewed and, you know, have my scores and this, that, and that. And it was just, it was a lot of things that could take some time. I said, I could do that, or I can take this opportunity right now. Um, it's, it's my last shot at even seeing if I would like this career field. And I said, what better way then to try to get into this career field, but through the military, I was going to do the military anyway. Uh, it seems that they set you up for success afterwards. And let's say I absolutely hate it. It's awful. Um, it's not the career I chose. I can always get out at the end of my contract, which is four years long, and I can go on and go with my plan that I thought I was anyway. Um, and I still have something to put down on my resume um, to move forward into into whether it be healthcare or any other field. And so I, for some days that just sat on me and I was like, hmm, man, okay, like, so what are we gonna do? <laughs> I was like, ah, so I've been telling people like this whole time, like I wanted to be a doctor, I want to be a surgeon, like blah, blah, blah. And then now that the time is here, I'm not, <laughs> you know, like I'm switching completely and going into, and going into air traffic control. I'm just like, man, like, you know, like was all that, like the effort in school, like was it for nothing? Like, you know, I'm throwing around with these, all these ideas. Plus, I'm like, this is not, I'm changing my my wife's like whole entire life because of what I'm trying to do. You know, I'm like, how do I even present this to her? Like, because, you, you know, it's one thing for you to say an idea and be like, hey, man, I'm just thinking about doing this versus being like, hey, this is what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it, it's completely different. And so I was like, huh, what do I say to her as to say like, I want to try this and not only try this hey this we're now going active duty we're moving um uh, and um oh by the way she comes from uh all her family is army and so i me choosing the marines is kind of like a 
what? You know, so I'm telling her, then I'm choosing a completely different branch down a completely different career field um, that I'm just taking a chance on because uh, it sounds interesting to me and my friends think uh, that it's pretty cool because they work in it already. So I'm like, man, <laughs> all right, how do I do this? So, um, so first off, I prayed about it for uh, at least a day, probably two days. Um, and so I run the idea by her, see what she says, and she doesn't hate it. She was just like, you know, kind of just make sure that's what you want to do, all right? So I'm like, well, I only got a couple of days to really figure out if that's what I want to do, so we got to go. <laughs> so then, uh, so, all right, so then I, then I kind of run the idea by like some of my family, uh, then I run the idea by some of my friends and stuff, and as you know, you expect, like everybody's shocked, they're like, but weren't you just doing um, you know, pre-med, like what, what happens with all that? What, weren't you just getting ready to move so you could try to take this other route? And I'm like, yeah, but my whole thing is I can try to strap myself down to one career field, which would be healthcare, which is, yes, okay. Strap it down to that one and I can take this path um, that um, it's longer and there's people that have taken that route of what I'm saying uh, do. Um, to try to get into med school and become a, a doctor, but I'm. But then I was like, if I have a family right now, I, how can I ensure that down the road it's worth it? I would, you know, that's a. I felt like that was a lot of um, if ands and a lot of um, not undue stress, but a lot of stress going into that. Um, because like it's i'm looking at possibly being 40 and um before i ever would be able to become uh like a physician for what i was trying to do so even though like i could i would have a job i would be working like it i don't i didn't know if it would be sufficient enough to keep like to then at the end, because I say if I don't accomplish what I'm trying to at the end, then is it like, well, dang, man, you just spent all those years doing this. You didn't even get to where you wanted to go. And then you missed out on something that you thought might have been cool and you possibly could have been good at. And so like all these decisions are coming at me at, at one time and I'm like, dang, 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 you know, like, OK. Um, you know, and I saw again, it goes back to me praying. So I, I literally prayed to God. I was like, OK. Yeah, you know what? We're about to do this. I was like, all right, like we're just gonna go for it. I said, if it's not of you, do not let it happen. I mean, as soon as I walk into the office, tell them, like, make them tell me get out, like, make them do whatever to, like, you know, to turn me away. Um, but if it if this works out, I'm gonna take this as you are allowing me this opportunity. Uh, man, that was my prayer. I was out here doing cardio, and so I was like, all right, so. Um, I go and I call the recruiter and he talks through with me for the Marines. I call the Marines one to see, so I call it actually that's I, I say this wrong. So um, I then decide that yes, I'm going to do air traffic control. I confirm it with myself. I tell my wife and she was like, okay, so I confirm it with myself after I pray and then I literally went and said, uh, I called Air Force first. I said, hey, can I do air traffic control and how fast can I get into it? They said, uh, we cannot guarantee you air traffic control. But what we can do is you can, uh, we can bring you in, you can do the ASVAB, blah, blah, blah. And what we can do is if you qualify, we will give you 10 jobs that you qualify for. And after you qualify for those 10 jobs, uh, they select which one you get out of that 10 because so many people want to do air traffic control in the Air Force. And I was like, huh, okay. And this goes back to, uh, I didn't tell you guys this, but before all this happened, um, just a few weeks prior to this, I had actually asked uh, one, of, uh, one of my wife's really good friends, her husband did, uh, I believe it was AWACS or something like that, um, in the in the air force so he did air traffic control but from inside of the plane and um he said he i'm pretty sure he chose not to um get certified for civilian but um 
all in all, though, he, he did know quite a bit of people that didn't get certified for civilian. Uh, he, he's going on to do uh, um, something with computers. Uh, I don't know if it's computer engineering or something like that, but he, after he finished his, uh, his time, he's now out in school to do uh, computer software or something, computer engineering. So um, he said it was just, he did enjoy doing it while he did it, but uh, he, didn't, he knew he didn't want to continue on with it. Um, and so it kind of matched up everything that I had kind of been researching um, and seeing people say where they went into um, the Army or the Air Force and they had to come out and uh, get more certifications in order to then try to get a job in civilian. Um, and for me, I didn't have that, I don't have that much time to do that. Because let's say if I sign a contract, um, I can go on, uh, one, by the time I get out, I'm already over the age threshold for uh, FAA, which is 30, 30 years old. Um, where if you go in through the military, they raise that rate to 35. So um, I was like, okay, um, well, I can't really take a gamble here. And I was like, which one can ensure me like, you know, um, that route in. So I just, I, li I kind of heard what he said and I, you know, took that information in. Uh, I talked to people I knew like in the army. Um, and, you know, I took that in because um, why I didn't choose Army was because they said a lot of those people do not get qualified uh, simply because they don't have uh, a lot of uh, bases that have, um, it, they do things differently. So they have towers um, because at first my initial thought was I wanted to get a CTO, um, a certified tower operator. So I wanted to be able to get that. Um, but the Air Force and the Navy both said that uh, the Air Force and the Army both said that they could not ensure that I would get that. It just depends on where I ended up having a duty station and if that was available. Uh, and even if you try to do like uh, like Tracon and um, in route, they again couldn't they couldn't say that you would rate for all the way through for FAA qualifications um, because it could be interrupted or you remove things like that. So I was like, okay. Um, so, uh, and with the army, they have, they do a lot of helicopters. And so, um, uh, and I kept reading like a lot of forums, uh, from veterans saying that, yeah, um, if you want to do air traffic control, don't go army just because a lot of those guys don't, it doesn't translate out because of, it is a lot of helicopter work instead of uh, fixed wing. So I was like, okay. So then now I take all this information with me as I'm calling recruiters. And um, so then Air Force tells me that, that they cannot guarantee the job. So I was like, all right, I ask Army uh, and I'm talking with them and they basically give me what, what I read uh, right off is that you could be stationed somewhere um, that has it, you could not be, but you would technically be it by label, but that may not be your what you do every day. You could be like in a motor pool, you could be setting up uh, um, airfields, like things like that, but you would be an air traffic controller. And so I was like, well, that doesn't sound like a good deal. So I was like, all right, well, I was like, gotta hear you, all right. <laughs> Looks like we are down to our last, our last one. Oh, another reason why I didn't choose Navy. Uh, Cause Navy does it from the boat, obviously. Uh, they do have some on land components, but um, to my understanding, they often work uh, with the Marines to do their on land portion. Uh, because even the Marines and the Navy both train for uh, air traffic control in the same facility, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure that's what they told me. I need to double back and check that, but um, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So I was like, and also I didn't want to be on a boat. So I, that was completely out for me, basically. But um, so I, I didn't call them to even check, but everything I read, what even if you look on their website, that's what it already kind of says. So I was like, there's, there's no point for me to even kind of follow through with this. Um, so then I called the Marines and I was like, hey, so this is what I'm trying to do. Um, how, one, how, can I get this guaranteed? And two, how quickly can I go? And the guy was, man, so easy, so smooth. He said, uh, he said, yeah, give me a second. Actually, I'm gonna put you in touch uh, with my aviation guy and uh, he's like, he can give you more information. It's cool. He calls me. He, he said he'll be in touch with you in like five minutes. It wasn't even five. It was like maybe two minutes. Calls me up. We the guy have a chat. Uh, he's telling me he was like, yeah, uh, basically it's possible. That's how our program is set up. Um, it's very much so possible. So then I asked, okay, well, can I? How? 
when can I go? He said, well, basically to be a Marine without an age waiver, um, you have to... Uh, you have to be in before your 28th birthday, uh, which is perfect because I would have to be in for FAA uh, basically before before my 30th birthday. So I would really only have next year. Um, so I was like, okay, perfect. You know, like my birthday's in January. Yeah, let's do it. So then, all right. So that was really so smooth. I go in. Uh, we sit down. They lay out everything for me how I would go, and they say basically, if you qualify for the job we are giving you the job and with and then so they let it write it out like on the thing uh when you look in the handbook it tells you right there uh basically all of the um anybody that goes for air traffic control that does end up uh making it through trainee and becoming actually get the mos of an air traffic controller gets a cto and i was like man you know it's like this lines up like, I was like, what, dude, I got, I almost got, like, kind of taken back because I was like, yo, like, this is, this is, like, exactly, like, what I prayed, like, this, because it's going so smooth, and where with all those other ones, like, it, it wasn't going like this, but with them, I mean, it wasn't, they weren't saying a whole bunch, they were just basically laying it out to me, and they were like, they weren't even like, hey, you know, you need to sign, they were just like, now here it is, and you let us know if, uh, if that's what you're looking for. I said, man, this is exactly what I'm looking for. And I, uh, they were like, all right. They said, well, whenever you're ready to start the process, let us know. I was like, today, like, let's let's get it going. So uh, we got some paperwork done, got some stuff going. Uh, we end up uh, get things set up for MEPS. Uh, I go I go test, and then I, I qualify on testing. And as soon as I get that and I go through all that, he literally tells me, hey, man, I can uh, put you in for it right now. Um, and he gave me two options of dates to get me in uh, the quickest. And I was like, holy crap. Like, I was like, God, this is exactly how I asked for it to go. So I'm like, so again, now, now this is me kind of second guessing again because I was like, yo, man, hey, <laughs> like, is this you? Like, uh, like, this is not me trying to make this happen, right? Like, this is actually, like, this is my prayer being fulfilled. Like, if I'm supposed to do this, you know, like, it's supposed to go this smooth, this is supposed to happen. Like, it, this is it, right? And I was like, yo, I mean, because before I was, when I did the testing and, like, you know, you still have to do all the paperwork and everything. I was like, yo, it's not too late, like, to mess this up. <laughs> like, uh, like, I'm still waiting to make sure this is actually the route I'm supposed to go. So at any time, you know, you can mess this up to where I'm like, oh, hey, you know, ah, uh, okay. You know, but, like, honestly, man, like, it's been exactly how I would want it to go. To, for me to know that my prayer was confirmed that, hey, this is your shot at this right now. And so I was like, well, hey, okay. So, um, yeah, to kind of basically wrap this all up and put a bow on top, um, that is why I chose the Marines over, over the Army was to try air traffic control. And to my understanding, um, in the field of air traffic control, um, basically it's the DOD contracting people, uh, or it's a lot of veterans working it. Um, there is a lot of civilians, you know, going to apply. Uh, with FAA, why you, why some people may ask, well, why didn't you wait until uh, next year to see if FAA put out more bids? Um, I'm, gl I'm glad I just thought of that because I meant to address that. With with that, it's not guaranteed that they'll put out more bids. One, uh, two, it's not guaranteed that um, I will get one of those spots of all the applicants because in three days they got all the spots that they needed. Um, I even reached out to my aunt who works with uh, HR and FAA and I said, hey, like, is it really all closed off? Because I looked two days after and she said, yes, it's really closed off. They have fulfilled all the spots that they needed for applicants at this time. So they will not be reopening it um, for at least a few months. And I was like, whoa, dang. So that also, that's another reason that led me back down the uh, military path. Um, so um, uh, basically, uh, yeah, tying it all back in. That's why I did not want to wait to see like, well, maybe they may open it in February. Maybe they may open it in March. Uh, because this, the last one that they just did was, uh, it was in August. But 
someone told me or something I read, they did one in like March earlier that ye this year. So, uh, but you don't know if that's if that's gonna happen again, um, because they are again guys are coming out of the military and trying to get in. And if they didn't get their qualifications while in the military, if they're still of age, they go to the academy. And obviously they're gonna take a guy that's already been in that somewhat knows the field, even if he doesn't, even if he only had the job by label, he, um, they will still give him an opportunity in the academy to go forward. So, and that's just from what I've read, I don't have any true confirmation on that, but that's just what I've read and understood from my reading. So, um, I was like, that's such a iffy game that I don't want that to happen. Um, and I was like, I just, if there was ever a time, this is now when I need to do it. So, um, all in all, that's why I ended up choosing the Marines, was to do air traffic control. Um, and I leave in like a month. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but I'll, I'll touch on that more um, as we get closer. But yeah, I hope this wasn't too long. Um, I, I knew I wanted to get on here. I'm about to go to work, actually. And um, I just finished eating some lunch, but I was like, man, I need to make a video, and the audio's not working on here yet. So I was like, well, maybe I'll just tell people about uh, my experience and like what's to come. So, um, yeah, man, uh, I'll update you guys on more and uh, how this goes. Um, you know, if, if it goes well, or if I just completely, uh, you know, uh, don't enjoy it and don't like it. I don't know. I've, but God forbid. I hope I do end up enjoying it. I'm pretty sure I will. But uh, yeah, if there's any parts that I kind of like for, I guess, make kind of blurry or I uh, didn't fully explain, uh, I apologize. I tried to make this as short as possible, but it looks like we're probably going to hit like 30 minutes on this. Um, and I'm wanting to, but I, I wanted to. So if you got any like questions or comments or any advice, anything of that sort, uh, please put it in the comments. Let me know. Um, because to my understanding, the, the Marines are pretty tough. And um, it's, and what I hear them say is you're a Marine first and then you are a whatever your job is second. So um, I'm prepared for the task, I believe. I'm trying to get myself ready conditioning wise. Um, you know, uh, I think I did five miles today. So yeah, um, I'm just gonna try to, you know, keep making sure I stay in shape as I go. Um, but yeah, if you have any stories or information you need to share with me uh, before I enter into my experience, please let me know. Um, I think, um, Oh, and clear up, no disrespect to the Army at all. Uh, those guys, also those recruiters, um, they know who they are if they ever see this video. Uh, they reached out to me and tried to help me. Thank you all so much. Um, wonderful job on y'all's part. Uh, it's just, it, it wasn't you guys. It was the, um, the layout of what, too many possibilities that for things to go wrong or, or not work out in my favor in the end for me to be able to choose that. So uh, otherwise, I mean, I would have chosen that. But um, yeah, so th they did a great job though uh, with providing me with the information so I can make the most educated decision from the information that I had from all of the possible um, branches I could go to. So uh, yeah. I I think that's about it. I'm trying to think through my story to make sure I covered everything. Um, I'm going to make another video too, telling you guys about my MEPS experience because man, that was one for sure. Um, yeah, whew, man, that was, that was interesting. But <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll be back on here with another story about that. But anyway, yeah, so we're, we're uh, Lord willing, we're going to be a Marine. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and uh, share because you never know who this might help out. Uh, there may be somebody who's in the exact same predicament as me that like, ah, should I try that career field? Should I stick with what I thought I wanted to do? Or, you know, like, is that going to go to waste? That degree, is that going to go away? Like, is it for nothing? You know, like, or is it worth trying this? 
all that. So share it with somebody. They it might help them. Cause Lord knows I spent days looking up information and I'm basically finding uh, gold with just like little forms of people talking about this or one paragraph in all this military documentation on their websites to explain this one section so then I can go to this other one and find this. I'm just ever all over the internet. Like I legit spent days trying to find this information. So if somebody can even get a video that kind of points them in the right direction, please share it with them. Um, yeah, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Said that. Uh, also check out my podcast. Uh, it's called the Ambitious Journey Podcast. We actually just put out two new episodes. Uh, we're basically back on our regular schedule again. So uh, make sure to check that out. We should have another one coming out probably Wednesday. More than likely Wednesday. So yeah, um, check that out. You can also yeah go to our YouTube and watch the video of the podcast or you can uh, just listen to the audio of it on any major platform that you would listen to that on. Um, yeah, we made it to 5K. Thank you all again for that. And so we're not on the road to, I think we said 15, 15K. That's when we'll do another uh, giveaway. So yeah, on the road to 15K. Um, yeah, so uh, we, we can celebrate that when, once we get there. That may be while I'm gone, so we'll party it up once I, once I get back from uh, boot camp and stuff, if we make it there. Um, anything else, man? I think that's it. Um, yeah, that's it. All right, so till next time.